monthly meeting, December 20, 2018, for the Scarborough Sanitary District. Well, that's the order. And now roll call. Let's call Charles Anderson. Here. Jason Greenleaf. Here. Ben Viola. Here. Judith Cavallaro. Present. And Aubrey Strauss and Joe Carroll aren't present at this time. I am Nick Rico. Let's see. The next item on the agenda is approval of two sets of minutes. The first is November 15, 2018, budget workshop. I move for approval. Second. So Jason moved. Charlie seconded. Any questions, comments, questions? All in favor? Two minutes. All right, the second set of questions, I mean, um, minutes. That would be November 15, 2018, regular monthly meeting. Move approval. Okay. Second. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Motion and a second. Any corrections? Yes, please. I'd like to do a correction for. Services has completed the weir installation on the two clarifiers, completing the sand blossom and painting of all the mechanical equipment. This was work that was budgeted to be completed this year. Uh, they are scheduled to return in the warmer weather to complete the epoxy coating of the laundries, which uh, is uh, proposed for budgeting for 2019. Uh, one of the VFDs at the at, uh, pump station number two failed due to a power, bad power supply. Fortunately, the power supply is no longer manufactured. Uh, the PSD is uh, just 10 years old, actually. 
Uh, we had to replace the VFD with a new unit, including shifting the total with approximately $4,000. Recently, we sold uh, three of our hose pumps to uh, the website Bid On Equipment. Uh, these pumps were replaced with $10 double fist pumps and products over two years, years ago. We listed the pumps uh, at that time. Uh, we received uh, a little over $7,000 for the three pumps. And we deposited those funds to fix that. The sewer work has started on both the north and south phases of uh, phase one of uh, Scarborough Downs. Um, Underwood engineers have presented to me the findings of the bioing process model that uh, they ran to simulate our operation uh, at the treatment plant to help us troubleshoot some of the uh, process difficulties that we have had historically. Um, that has historically plagued the plant, specifically uh, for settling or high SDIs. They had some very interesting findings and recommendations, specifically changing the process to an aerobic, anaerobic, aerobic activated sludge process, which is also dubbed an AO process. Over the next years, we'll be exploring this option further with uh, DDP and uh, Underwood to evaluate its um, potential here at, at the <coughs> And uh, finally, uh, in a very untimely manner, the district's computer service server crashed over the weekend of the 8th. After two days, uh, our consultant determined the server was non-recoverable, after which she set up a temporary server. Consequently, we did not have access to our files or emails until later in the week, which resulted in the delay of the, the packet and the agenda getting put together. Fortunately, our backup system worked as designed and we did not lose any data. Uh, the server was ironically scheduled to be replaced in 2019 and it will be replaced very early on in 2019. So uh, it, has, it is currently on order and we will be doing it shortly. That's what it has to drop down to the tennis report. Okay, any questions from Superintendent? Uh, two questions. Uh, under the sewer work, the north, the north and south phases of the project at Scrambler Downs, mm -hmm. um, are we, do we have a presence there to adequately inspect the yes. construction project? Yes, we do. Um, I just want to be sure that if, if, if we need someone to be there on a full-time basis for any kind of extent of work there, then I'm not sure. Yeah. No, we're being very aggressive on that. Um, and under the uh, computer server issue, is that going to be funded this year out of contingency? And do we then, and do we, do we then have to amend the proposed budget for 2019? I think by the time the server arrives, it's going to be next year. Okay, so the payment will be made until yeah. after January 1st. Yeah. Okay. I did have a question about the virus and the AO process. What are the benefits of the AO process? The AO process, uh, the, under the anaerobic, the first phase of the process is the anaerobic phase. And during that phase of the process, the uh, biology of bacteria um, take up phosphorus. And, um, and then uh, and, and those types of bacteria actually are, are very heavy. And so they have very different settling characteristics. So hence it would resolve the settling high heat of this one so that we should have had. Okay.
want a pure anaerobic tank, not an anoxic tank. And uh, anoxic, the, you have the recycle back that's bringing back the nitrates and the oxygen, which create that anoxic situation. Okay. Uh, on to the next item, which would be correspondence. Um, I received a letter from the Public Utilities Commission uh, with regards to our, our case at, uh, with PUC and concerning our CMP bills. Um, the, the letter addressed our high bill concern and the, the fact that it has, was, has been resolved. Um, <laughs> I called PUC and told them that the letter is wrong on two accounts. One, we don't have a high bill issue. We have a uh, low bill issue, and it has not been resolved. Uh, you know, for the audience that's in front of us here, uh, we we uh, our bill typically at the treatment plant is between seven to ten thousand dollars a month, and for the past year we've been receiving a bill for about five hundred dollars. Um, despite calls CMP, I may be good, but I'm not that good. Um, despite calls to CMP and to PUC, so I had a follow-up comment. I called PUC, and the, the initial response was that they were going to note our file. I got to check out all of that. Uh, they did call back and had a long conversation with me with regards to the, the issues, and so they are working again with CMP on it. So I don't have. This is something I did see on the news this evening that they completely did not it. Everything checked out. Yes, very few errors. So I guess we'll be being billed five hundred dollars a month. I'm happy with that. I just, I just, uh, honestly, I mean, it works to our advantage. But at some point in time, they're going to figure this out. And they're going to realize that they've lost two hundred thousand dollars a year in payments from us. And they're going to come back with Actually, I'm just shocked by the incompetence of Central Maine Power and the PUC in being able to hear our concerns for over a year. PUC ineffective, CMP totally in another world. Um, I'm just, I've got no confidence in it whatsoever. I'm one guy who longs for the old days when CMP was a, a state regulated utility and a monopoly much better and more efficient. Uh, I know that's a thing of the past and it will never return, but we are not definitely better off or being better served by this current region. I will point out currently that um, I don't know if they ever will figure it out. I, I don't think they will catch up and they, I don't know if they'll back charge for everything that we supposedly have used. I don't see how they can back charge when the they, they haven't metered the use, so they don't know what our use was. So, um, anyway, I, I echo your comments and my lack of confidence in them fixing that problem anytime soon. That was a form letter they sent you, obviously. Yeah. And they said, you know, we'll check it out and send you what, huh. what you're owed. That was a form letter that you're sending them. So they didn't even check into it. One of many form letters. Exactly.
direct line to call um, if you have any other problems. Continue to pursue it. Please. <laughs> Any more questions about PUC, CMP, and any other acronyms we've got in there? Okay. Um, that was the last agenda item number five. Let's do six. Old business. We have none. New business. Number seven. A. Adoption of the 2019 budget. The proposed budget uh, summary for 2019 is included in the packet. Um, had the budget workshop where the trustees and I, uh, we went through the details of the budget, including each line item that makes up the, up the budget. The budget summary before you is a summary of that budget with the following changes. The addition of a $6,000 item on the capital expenditures for the operating funds for the upgrade of the fire alarm system to a wireless system as required by the town. And the addition of $10,000 on the composting slash sludge disposal as a result of bids received for a contract calling of our sludge. Uh, we received two bids, each for $500 of one another. Uh, the proposed budget is summarized as follows. Operating budget before capital expenditures is uh, $3,280,497. Up uh, in capital expenditures is $3,398,497 from last year. Uh, fixed asset capital expenditures of uh, 477500 and, cap and uh, capital reserve capital expenditures of 10000 The total budget is $3,885,997, uh, which is an increase of 5.58% for the last year. Do I have a motion to approve? Move approval. Second. that are incorporated into the budget off of, off of our replacement schedule. Um, that's the part of our budget that generally fluctuates the most dramatically. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think the items that are on here are timely to be done. Uh, obviously, uh, obviously the replacement of the server, which is not on that particular line item again, one of the one of the timely items to be scheduled. Unfortunately, we're six weeks late. I guess we could. Uh, that's hard to know. Um, so um, I think the I think the I think the budget's very responsible, and uh, if it weren't for the capital items um, requiring replacement, we'd be we'd be in at under three percent. So Any more questions, comments? All in favor? None opposed. Cool. Um, Scarborough Downs, phase one, south. On behalf of Crossroads Holding, uh, Gold Farmer has requested that Scarborough Sanitary District Board of Trustees accept the sewer within the phase, uh, this phase of Sanitary District property once the uh, project is complete. The project was originally approved in August, but at that time the road was proposed uh, to be private. Uh, consequently, the sewer was to remain private. Since that time, the project has been modified such that the town will be, will be accepting the road as a public road. I have included in the fact a copy of, of the original full uh, approval uh, along with this. Uh, the proposed development is as follows, four multi-family condominium buildings for a total of 32 units. Eight few plexes for a total of 16 units, 10,064 square feet, term repair facility, and a 10,652 gallons per day of typical sanitary wastewater. Uh, 
we could we could put our services into the the pipe um, and we put the service into that. I mean, put the service into the manhole. We put that service into that manhole. Apparently, we just depicted it high. It should be down low because it's again the service is going, to, it was going into the pipe previously. So we, we can address that. But the actual line coming in is also.
Will you please advise me as to the better way in which I should proceed with you in order to enable you to allow me to view the above mentioned materials? For example, if necessary, as directed by you, I will submit to the Sanitary District's Freedom of Information Act officer a FOIA request for the documents. Thank you. And Dave wrote back, uh, and I'm reading again. Uh, at this point, I believe that information falls under the executive session, but I would defer to our attorney. Uh, you have already seen the proposed location, which was discussed about and voted on during the last meeting. Uh, and then he cc'd uh, the, your, the district's attorney, uh, Peter Van Helden, and wrote, uh, Peter, please advise, and signed Dave. Um, and have, that was uh, a few days ago, pardon me, the exact date, uh, December 17th. The agenda, Dave explained, uh, because of the computer crashing, uh, there was some delay in that coming out. So uh, you nicely uh, spoke to me and outlined and wrote, followed up in an email generally what this meeting would include, uh, RE Verizon. Uh, so that's the background. I and I understand there's no answer to that question from the attorney yet. Uh, with the season and all of that, I'm not Mr. Anderson, you have a response to that. Well, it would seem to me that anything that we've done historically is a copy of the lease that they would like to see, of the existing lease, that, that there would be no problem he already has a copy of yeah, and I do have a copy of it. Well, I was asking specifically, as my email said, for the, what I'll call the resubmission of documents that Verizon provided for you, for you to be able to go into your executive session. Oh. And that's why they said it's under the executive session rule. Now, I did look, I do see the executive session Title One. RSA section 4056C, and I looked that up, and paragraph C, uh, which you know, it's very brief, uh, is discussion or consideration of the condition, acquisition, or the use of real or personal property permanently attached to real property or, or interest therein, or disposition of publicly held property or economic development. And this is the question I have. Only if premature disclosures of the information would prejudice the competitive or bargaining positions of the body or agency of you. And my question would be, in what way you can disclose would the information that Verizon asked you to consider in your executive session, in what way would that uh, premature disclosure of that meeting now, uh, would that prejudice the competitive? Uh, how? Can I ask you, can I answer that one, Eric? Sure. Sure. Appreciate this it. Is how it would prejudice. They've come back and asked us to look at something, and that may impact how much they pay us in a lease. Now, if we discuss how much we thought they should pay us in a lease in open forum in front of the cameras with the microphones on, then they would know who was for what payment. And that's a negotiation in a real estate deal. You, can, you know, if you bought a house, would you discuss with your realtor in front of the owner of the current house that you want to buy what you want to offer and what you're willing to go for your final offer? I don't think you would. That's why we go into executive session. Okay, so if I, I say I want a million dollars for that lot, you know, for rental. You know, Dave is going to say, they probably won't buy that. And then he'll ask, well, what's your ultimate, you know, final answer going to be? And then we'll direct them to go and negotiate on our behalf. That's what we would do. And that's why it needs to be an executive session. I completely understand that. I appreciate you, uh, you uh, clarifying that. Um, I would only add just one thing uh, with respect, and that is, what Verizon has asked you to consider uh, isn't what you just said. I mean, perhaps it is, and I'm missing the point, but 
in a negotiation over what Verizon asked you to consider, I completely understand that it's that's need to be private for the reason that you described. Well, what they asked us to consider was a different location than what we've already agreed upon. They also want to take more land than what we've already agreed upon. So that's the reason we're going into an executive session. Well, I'll I'm, say no more about it because I don't want to reveal anything else. I appreciate you uh, offering that information. Thank you. I'm not sure how this works. <laughs> Mr. Viola, do you have any response from my lawyer? He has called, we have traded phone calls. Yeah. So he did return a call back, uh, and I called him back. And Thank you very much. I'm William LeCay, said we're fifth tool on that road. Um, just a small correction from your last record that will make my marriage a little easier. My wife's name is Lucy L-U-C-Y LeCay, so not Lucille LeCay. <laughs> Well, thank you. I've accomplished pretty much everything I have. <laughs> First of all, I, I just want to say thank you for being so accommodating. You're an easy board to appear in front of, and we really, really greatly appreciate it. On the camera, because we're talking about the Scarborough Marsh, I would say a million dollars for the cell tower would be fine, and I'm happy to have Verizon. In the marsh while you're, while you're yeah, in, the interest of, in the interest of clear clarity, I will not be making that comment. Well, I actually will not be at the executive session, so I don't know where you are planning to place the tower now. Well, the only thing I can say is you just stated publicly that it's going to be in the marsh, and I would like the record to be clear that there's nothing to date that would indicate we are putting a tower in the marsh. I would agree with you 100%. Thank, thank you. you. Um, I just want to make a couple of points, and we just really wanted to come tonight because we know we're not part of the executive session, and we know it's an ongoing conversation, and it's probably repetitive. Um, but we do feel, as citizens of the town of Scarborough, and it seemed pretty clear when we were before the planning board, the planning board does also, that there is a better location for the tower if it's going to go on the sanitary district property. I, we're not part of the executive uh, uh, meeting, so we can't be pointing at maps, but I think you have a pretty good idea of where we all felt that it ought to go, and I, I think the planning board feels the same thing. And it's sort of interesting with this process that it's hard to get all the parties together at one time and talk about these things, which is why we just took the time to come here. The second thing, we came here the last time, and again, we were extremely accommodating at that point in time. We talked about the type of towers, and I know you hadn't done a lot of research about that, but I also know your engineers, and it really seems as though what we're calling the stealth tower, which is basically a pole with the antennas inside, is much more appropriate for anything that's going to be on the sanitary district. And the planning board is aware of that, Verizon's aware of that, the attorneys that are talking are aware of that, and we truly feel that you can, in working out your lease with Verizon, have a lot to say about obviously where the tower is going to go, and also have a lot to say about what the tower would be. That clearly can be part of your lease. So we just wanted to come in, and, and frankly, and, and just say that again, knowing that you would all be talking and that we wouldn't be there. So. The tower's never going to be in the marsh, and I'm sorry I just spoke about that, but I was trying to start out with a little joke, frankly, because you're also accommodating us. So we would really appreciate it if you do continue to show the flexibility that you have in terms of where the tower's going to go, because we actually think working with Verizon on that can be helpful to everyone. And we also would simply ask that you be extremely strict as to what kind of tower you're considering with your lease. And again, thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it. I'll just take a minute. I'm Stephanie Smith. I live on um, Audubon Way in Scarborough, and I'm president of the board of the Friends of Scarborough Marsh. So we have a vested interest in what even comes close to the marsh, let alone is in the marsh. I want to thank you for your consideration of moving the site. And I, as I say, I won't take much time. I was not here for the last meeting and I, so I'm a little coming in a little, little cold on this. But uh, whatever you can do to move 
the, the site away from the marsh. And the farther away from the marsh you can get it, the better we like it. And I would reiterate what Mr. McKay said about if there's some way to do a stealth tower and really require that Verizon consider that or do that, I would really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Any more members of the public like to speak? Okay. I think we might move on to the next item. Chairman, okay. before we leave, I guess I'd just like to make one comment. That, um, I'm not sure if the superintendent has had any direct conversations on this matter with either the planning staff or members of the planning board, uh, but we're open to any kind of conversation with the planning board that they would like to have. And uh, our view is that they are the ones who will decide whether there's a tower that's warranted and what the and what the parameters would be under which they would approve a tower and we're pretty much looking for them for guidance on what what the site would look like so we're, we'd be willing to talk with them if they wanted to talk with us we have had no inquiries that I'm aware of that uh, from from the town in any way that, that was seeking clarification or input from us regarding our position but we're open to any discussion that they would like to have at any point in time, and I just want you to be aware of that. Um, it's not common that the board meets jointly with uh, either the town council or the planning board, but we have historically in the past had times when we've sat down uh, and communicated very clearly. We've done joint projects. Uh, we've built sewer lines on the behest of the town. Uh, in cooperation with the town that the town has actually funded, so we've had close cooperation in the past, and we will continue to do that. If the town had any, take any takes any initiative to approach us, we'd be open to conversations with the planning board or planning staff. So I just want to get that out there. That's our position continuously, but yeah. I don't know if nobody's heard that recently, so I just thought I'd get it out there for everybody. Do you mind if I just stand up and respond to that? <coughs> I don't think it needs a response, to be honest with you. I'm just saying we're willing to meet with folks. <laughs> Again, it's still the case, 52 on that road. It's sort of funny because we've gone to, we've been in front of the planning board in multiple meetings on this, and they talk about, they talk as though this is all on your shoulders and they can't understand what you're doing down here. Uh, it, it, I'm not suggesting that's accurate or not. I'm just telling you what we're hearing from them. They're sort of acting like, oh, we can't believe that this is happening at the sanitary district. And then we come here, and we're hearing that you would be uh, happy to talk to them. But I, I don't understand why the sanitary district, based on that view, couldn't reach out to the planning board and say, why don't we have a joint meeting? Why don't we go have a site walk? Why don't we see where everyone would be in agreement with this? These are the kind of actions that could stop litigation from happening in the future, which would be a win-win for everybody. But it seemed to be a little bit of a standstill where the planning board say, well, this is an our issue, this is the planning board. I mean, the uh, sanitary district and the sanitary district saying, well, we haven't heard from the planning board. I don't see what difference it makes which board reaches out to the other board. I, don't, I suspect there are no rules that the sanitary district can't reach out to the planning board or that the planning board can't reach out to the sanitary district. So I would just ask or recommend, if that's something you're willing to do, reach out to them and see if we could have a joint site walk that may include even some members of the public and some members of Verizon. I think a lot of these issues could be easily solved if everybody could be comfortable together in one place. So thank you for letting me say that. Well, I'll say that it would probably be easier for the superintendent to work directly with the planning department because frankly, I don't think it would be an easy task to get the planning board and the sanitary district board to meet together at one time in a timely fashion to resolve this whole thing. The other thing I'd like to respond to is why is it the planning board and not the sanitary district? The planning board is part of the town. The town devised an ordinance back in 2014 that guided 
cited the town's actions in citing towers and deciding what goes into town. We didn't. We don't have those powers. They do. So we're going into executive session to discuss it, but that's about as far as I'm going to go on that. I do, can I ask a question? I know you, I, I think uh, you requested a site walk and um, it was in an email. Did you get any response to that? Um, do you want me to say it? Yeah. Lucy LaHaye's 52 on that road. Um, I think they said they weren't ready at this time. So that was, and I'm, I'm not sure where that came from, whether it was a formal decision or an informal one. But I would applaud your working with Jay and Jamel and having a conversation. I think that would be a really great proactive way and, and thank you for suggesting that. That would be terrific. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> May I have one more quick question? Be my guest. <laughs> After our engage, after your executive session, is there a way to find out what your decision is? Uh, no, because what we're going to do is we're going to work with our attorney and our superintendent to negotiate, renegotiate the lease with Verizon. If we tell you what we just did, we'd have to do it in front of the camera on tape. Mr. Chairman, we make no decisions in executive session. No, the only no. thing we'll do is talk about the issues. The superintendent will get a sense of the board, and he will go from there. We don't, we don't vote on any items in executive session. We're going to make, not making any decisions. And if there's a decision that will be made, it will be on our agenda to discuss or act on uh, a request by Verizon. You'll know about it. You'll be able to come and sit and listen to our discussions about it. It will be public. You know, we don't, we don't go to executive session, take votes, and, do, and go that route. That's not, nothing, there's going to be no decision made in executive session. So there's not going to be anything to report to you. It's a fluid discussion of the issues. The superintendent will get direction as he coalesces the board's individual trustees' thoughts and discussions. He'll kind of summarize where he thinks he needs to go with it, and we'll hear back from him again at some other time. I understand, and uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you, thank all you very much. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, next items on the agenda. Executive session for discussion concerning the lease of district property pursuant to Title I, MRSA Section 405-6C, and executive session for personnel matter for Title I, Section 405, MRSA. So motion to go in executive session. Second. And then, uh, any discussion? All in favor? Yes. Oh, yes, we need to return. 